the McRib will soon be gone forever. James Corden apologized for being nasty, and Kanye did it again. All that and more on the third episode of the Yeesh Podcast. Welcome to the Yeesh Podcast, episode three. Today we're going to talk about stuff. Should be exciting. Should be really, really exciting. So, Hakeem. Yes. The McRib. Hmm. Which we, uh... The McRib. Oh my god, this is a fucking mess. We bought, we just for everyone's uh, knowledge. Wow. We got McRibs. Heads up. <laughs> the McRib is back. We're going to eat them while we make this episode, while we talk about the McRib. Well, we're going to eat them until we enjoy them, until we learn something horrifying about them. I'm already enjoying this. All right. So the McRib uh, is 520 calories. Uh, oh, yeah. By the way, heads up. Here's the news. Um, it's back for a limited time. Uh, limited time. I say farewell. Farewell. Yeah, this is the, the farewell McRib. tour. You got you got couple months fellas i don't even think you have that long i think i think it's even less uh you know if you want to get this tasty it's like mcrib there's a lot of pickles in here i love pickles i hate pickles (laughs) uh yeah so so anyways uh (laughs) (laughs) all right so the mcrib right so um little history about the mcrib um, dig in. Yeah, I'm, I'm dig in. For it. Yeah, a little history about the McRib. Um, 1981 on the menu. Oh my god, this is a fucking mess. Mm-hmm. Is there a napkin? <laughs> oh my god. 1981 barbecue flavored things. Mm-hmm. Barbecue flavored pork sandwich. Hmm. You know. Hmm. Not bad. Not good. Not bad. Uh, pork sandwich. Pear, pear, yeah. Brilliant. The McRib was a pork flavored, pork flavored, pork flavored, by the way, sandwich. It's not, it's not real food. It's, it's horse meat. It's not horse meat. <laughs> I don't think it's horse meat. Maybe it is. After poor sales, the menu was removed in 1985, reintroduced in 1989, then it was re- again and again in 2005. 2006 has generally been available for a short period of time or was sold typically during the fall season. Although if you're in Germany or in Luxembourg, it's available year round. Now here's how it came about. So the McRib consists of restructured boneless pork patty shaped like a miniature rack of ribs, barbecue sauce, onions, and pickles served as a sandwich and a five and a half inch roll Meat restructured was developed by the United States Army to develop a low-cost meat to troops in the field. The process was def- was refined at Natick Army Labs. Meat scientist, this is his real name, Roger Mendingo, <laughs> leading the McRib patty. It's primary cons- composed of ground pork shoulder. In a statement about it, um, Mendingo says... Government doesn't patent their intellectual property so anyone can use it. They, the Natick Center, presented the material at a technical m- meetings. The military allowed us to use a process they developed. In an attempt to give the pork the same stature as beef in the institutional market. Same stature. It's not even real beef. It's sta- it's, it's designed, it's, it's fake meat. Genetically modified meat? I don't know if it's got GMOs. It probably does. Pickle. Yeah, it's all right. Couch is not good these days. Um, uh, National Pork Producers Council founded Mandango to show how uh, how to apply the new technique using his roadmap. McDonald's then developed the patty of pork made from small flakes of meat taken from the shoulders of a pig. This is a product created by the United States Army to feed troops in MREs. Are you serious? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm eating an MRE. Yeah, you're eating an MRE. A fancy MRE. Surprise! <sighs> I told you you wouldn't want to eat it. Mm, Alright. I just had my wisdom teeth taken out. 
Yeah. So, yeah, this is already hard enough. But mm-hmm. you reading as pig shoulder? Is that what you said? Yeah, it's pig shoulder. Yeah, ground pork, ground pork shoulder, and then it's reconstituted. So they grind it into flakes, and then they like part like particle board. They mash it together. Time out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's gross. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't even like pig. You, you like pig feet? Get it while you can. No bones. And, your boy's have one. Bone. and no. the McRib is on its way out. <laughs> <laughs> it's quote unquote farewell tour. So I've had a McRib in probably six, seven years. Mm-hmm. This McRib was poorly prepared. Yeah, I will say about yeah, this is a mess. Yeah, but you know the the flavors there. Uh huh. The pickles are there. The onions are there. Yeah. Um, barbecue's there. That's probably only the you probably <laughs> listed off all the real ingredients. You're eating an MRE patty. Surprise! <laughs> this is bad. Uh, it's good though. Best one, best one I've ever had. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. This is the best McRib you've ever had. MRE. Ugh. In my rib. <laughs> this is like hard to eat. I'm gonna eat all of it. Cheers. Um, yeah. Cheers um, me up. Cheers me up. I yeah. got you. Here you go. Yeah, I got you. Yep. Cheers. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, Good stuff. For those of you who don't know what an MRE is, it's army food, uh, dehydrated in a package that lasts indefinitely, pretty much, for it's army soldiers to eat. Dog food. It's just dog food. Yeah, it's just fancy dog food. Mm-hmm. And McDonald's was able to sell you it. And you you flock, people flock to McDonald's when the McRib's out. So, no wonder it did so poorly in 1985 or whatever. <laughs> On the list of things from the menu, uh huh, I wouldn't say the McRib's even top five. No at McDonald's, but yeah, when they when they when they sell it to you like this mm-hmm. with a farewell tour, I have to have it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's that's like, a marketing. That's all marketing. This is a great scheme. It's working. Yeah. You see, we got we got ours. Mm-hmm. Better go get yours. Well, we 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 bought our we bought ours for this bit. We bought ours for a joke. Who's laughing now? Yeah, McDonald's is because they have our fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, be a yeesh, you know. Oh my god. This is this is a mess. It's great. Yeah, that's uh, that's the McRib. Uh, what else are we talking about? <laughs> In other news. Mm. In other news, yeah. We got oh. late, late night television host James Corden. Yeah. Um, banned from a New York restaurant. Mm. Uh, the- yeah, New York restaurant Bathazar. Mm. This happened. Mm. This happened like two weeks ago, I want to say, and um, he uh. I hate him. I hate him with passion. I did not like James Corden. <laughs> what? What? What did James Corden ever do to he you? He didn't do anything to me. He just didn't know when to stop. Mm. You know, he's not funny. Whoa. He's, hot, hot take. Yeah, I'm, that's fine. If you're a James Corbin fan, sorry, I feel strongly about this one. James Corbin also, for anyone who didn't know, was this abomination in Cats. In Cats, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you see that movie? No. Okay, good. <laughs> but I heard about it. Yeah. When it came out. And I think he like I think he like won an award for this. Like no. Uh, yeah, for real. Look at that. 28, 28 out of 10. 2.8 out of 10. 28% of Google users liked it. Metacritic gave it a 32, Rotten Tomatoes a 19%. Oof. Maybe not. Maybe, uh-huh. not, maybe not an award for this one. I don't think anyone won, won an award for cats. Look at him. Look at him. Ugh. His little hands, things. I don't like him. He's really getting into his role right here. Oh, right here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why? I, this is a dead horse, by the way. The internet killed this thing a long time ago. Killed killed cats. Anyways, what we're here to talk about is James Corbin. Right. Okay, so James Corbin has just issued an apology. Um. Uh, we still no one. I don't know what he said. 
if you know what he said, please comment in the please. link. Please, please comment below because we start, we are we have scoured the internet to try and figure out what he said. Anyways, he was like he was just really all around nasty. Um, he said something about uh, he was rude. He said he was I can cook it myself. He said something along the lines like it was a hair. Oh. Oh yeah, there was a hair in his main meal. Yeah. Which one of them? Main meal. This is a- <laughs> this is my main meal. <laughs> I don't have James Corbin money. Right. This is a like a five star restaurant, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Michelin, is- Michelin star and whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. how is how is this how does this happen? A hair. A hair in the food. Wow. Okay. That's I don't- fine. Okay. Right. Eat around it, I guess. Then <laughs> his wife is giving food that she's allergic to. Yeah. You're gonna hear some words. Yeah. All right. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna hear some words from that. Um, but he, uh, it says he said something along the lines that he could cook cook the cook the food himself better, which he probably could. Hot, right? That's a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> and so him saying that, right? I feel like that's my bad, in a sense. You know. What you're bad, as in as in if you're the waiter. Of course, if you're the waiter, maybe you're you're in the, you're in the line of fire. Right. But. If you're the cook or whoever put the fucking hair in there. Yeah. You deserve it. Okay. Yeah. You deserve what, what what was said to you. Right. But I know he has a British accent. And and when people when people say things with a British accent, their words hurt more. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Okay, and I I bet that waiter went home that night and he he cried himself to sleep, probably. Yeah. Thinking about what James Corden said to him. Okay, so James Corden apologized, and uh, this is his uh, his apology video. We sit down, we ordered, and my wife explained uh, that, that she has a, a serious food allergy, right? So when everybody's meals came, my wife was given the food that she was allergic to. As her meal came wrong to the table the third time, in the heat of the moment, I made I made a sarcastic, rude comment right, about cooking it myself. And it is a comment I deeply regret. I didn't call anyone names or use derogatory language. I've been walking around thinking that I hadn't done anything wrong, right? But the truth is, I, like I have, I made a rude, co- rude comment. And it was wrong. It was, it was an unnecessary comment. It was ungracious to the server. That I've ever upset anybody, ever, it, it was never my intention. It just wasn't. And I love that restaurant. I love the staff there. I hope I'm allowed in again one day. So I'm, when I'm back in New York, I can go there and apologize in person. That's crazy. He didn't even apologize in person. They wouldn't, they wouldn't let him back. Wouldn't let yeah, him but back. I would have done something, man. Right. I would have done something. He said he called him, though. You know? Yeah, but I would have like gone outside the restaurant or something, you know what I mean? And just been like, I am so sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, you know, after, the, after the incident. Yeah, yeah. And then... like. I, I don't buy his apology. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't I, buy him either. I, I don't think I, the only reason he's apologized right now. Yeah, it's because of the online. Uh, because yeah, of the backlash. Yeah, because of the backlash. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think he means that apology. And the reason I th- I think that is because he's like, I hope to one day when I'm back in New York, go to this restaurant again. And it's like no, you will never go back there because there's a million restaurants in New York. And there's a million other places you can go, and that'll be the end of that. Yeah, I mean, it's just one restaurant, man. Yeah, for real. And one airline. <laughs> and, uh, neither of which he'll have to visit ever again. Yeah, he, you could, know what he mean? has enough money. He can buy his own airline, probably. I don't know about that. Maybe not. Okay, but he could probably buy his own restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could buy a restaurant, sure, you know absolutely. But it's like, he's not, that's why I don't, that's why I don't fucking like him. Ooh, it makes me so mad I don't like him. I, I like British people. I like British people. I think general. they're good. I think yeah. like uh, like I just something something about them, you know. Yeah, intriguing. I don't like him. He's not good. <laughs> He's not one of the good ones. No, no. <laughs> they should like throw him in the Tower of London or whatever their prison is or whatever it is. <laughs> so yeah, so James Corbin made Bathazar famous because he's an asshole. All right, what else we got? <laughs> We're talking about Kanye. Oh shit! Here we go again. Um, so Kanye West, Adidas has cut ties, um, Balenciaga's cut ties, Vogue and Anna Wintour cut ties, he's dropped by his talent agency, CAA, 
dropped by his lawyer. Mm-hmm. Streams, mm-hmm. sales, and airplay plummeted, restricted from Instagram and Twitter. Stadium shows canceled, and the documentary has been shelved. Damn. Baby, bye, 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 bye. He is broke. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> he's about to be. He's got no more money. Yeah, man. I, the, the Adidas one. That's big. But, you know, I don't know if he needs Adidas. He's got that. Uh, he's got that. That thing. He's got his own his own air apparel line. You know For sure. Mean? But the the he had his brand through Adidas. Oh. And and they were like, does that was, mean that's the like end of Yeezus? I don't I don't think so. I don't maybe know that's the end of his involvement. Maybe with, with Adidas, but like the partnership, all of his thing, everything, his Yeezys were Adidas shoes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, where does where do we go from here? Fucking hell, dude. That's wild. I won. I won some Yeezys when they first came out. Oh really? So expensive. How much? Thousands. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You don't wear them. No. You just buy them and put them up. Um. Yeah. Put them on the shelf. Put them on the shelf. And then you tell no one that you have them. Oh, no. Because so they're gonna try to steal them. Yeah. Me. Of course. So it's like, how can anybody? <laughs> how can you be like, wow, look at this great thing I have, but there's no one around to, to share with it. You, know you, what you mean? like take a picture in one, while well, sitting in one location, and then you move it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, so yeah, Kanye, he's not broke, but that whole bit about, we talked about in the last episode, was the uh, J.P. Morgan 145, 154, whatever it was, million. That's nothing now. Hang that up. Goodbye. Oh, he went on Pierce Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Kanye West says, uh, tells Pierce Morgan... Uh, nobody gets judged more than the straight white male. Okay. West pulled out his latest stunt, sat down with an interview with Pierce Morgan, uncensored show. This time, the outspoken rapper decided to advocate for straight white male, saying there's nobody that gets judged more than a straight white male. Straight white males has at least has least amount of a platform to speak. He's doubling down on the whole DEFCON thing on Jews. Mm-hmm. He's not backing up from it. A straight white male can't say a black employee didn't come to work on time because people will say you're racist. Mm. A straight white male can't speak on a homosexual person because they'll say you're homophobic. Yeah, you know I'm saying like there's nobody that gets judged more than a straight white male. The straight white male has the least amount of a platform to even speak. A straight white male can't say, my wife hurt me today. And because people will say, well, you're hurting women. A straight white male can't say, hey, a black employee didn't come in to work on time because then people will say you're racist. A straight white male can't speak on a homosexual person because uh, they'll say you're ho- you're homophobic. Wow. Well, what happened to his voice? Well, it does sound different, huh? Huh? He does sound different. He sounds really different, right? I was going to say, uh, well, as a straight white male, how do you feel? Bruh. <laughs> Yay, speaking up for you. Uh, I don't think he, no, he doesn't speak for me. No. <laughs> I think it's all bullshit. Yeah, I mean. It's all total bullshit. This all comes, uh, West com- uh, comment comes after his conservative friend Candace Owen. That's all. She's always a, a treat to talk about. Uh, recently uttered a similar statement as uh, Blavity previously reported. Owen shared her views when she was chosen as speaker at Turning Point USA College event, at Michigan State University. Oh, that's a lot to unpack. So Candace Owens and Kanye West are besties. Candace Owens. Are you familiar with her? Basketball. No. Mm-hmm. This woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't know. Yeah. I, I know who she is. She is, uh, Candace Owens threatens George Floyd's family. I think they, I think that I have grounds to sue. She is utterly terrible. Why? Well, she believes, uh, she'll say, come out and say things like, you know what? I'll just show you. So this is Candace Owens, right? Kanye West's friend. Right. Mm -hmm. She says the truth isn't as simple as as the greatest lie ever sold pretends. She have a relationship with Kanye. Excuse me. They both wear white lives matter. Kanye's buying parlor, which is a predominantly conservative um, um, 
Well. By the way, I downloaded Parlor. What's that? I downloaded Parlor. Did you really? I did. Oh my god. What did what did you what did you find out? It is uh I mean you, now you're an expert. You can uh you can say anything you want in that app. That's all I will say. If you want to find out, download the app. <laughs> it's a hyper conservative uh, uh social but media he, platform. You gotta understand he's buying the app because he has no other place he can Yeah, I got it. Yeah do his uh Voice. That's the same voice. thing that would happen with uh, Donald Trump was whenever he did kicked him off of Twitter. Right. You know what I mean? He went to another platform that no one had heard of. I think it was like truth.org or something like that. <laughs> something, something, something like that. Anyways, this was one day ago. She, she is like, uh, she's an author. She's a talk show host. She thinks that black people have it easy. She's a big fan of, uh, um, I almost called them toilet paper USA. Uh, <laughs> Turning Point USA. Turning Point USA. Hey. Uh, they are a hyper conservative um, political um, talk show thing organization. They have a talk show. <clears throat> a lot of the people that are, oh, well, excuse me. Let me correct myself. It is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Okay. What they do is they push hyper conservative evangelical Christian uh, agendas, right? And when I mean hyper, that's that I'm using all those words very lightly when I say that, right? Um, they've got small face, aka Charlie Kirk. Don't like him. He's awful. Uh, he does have a small face. He that's has a very nickname. tiny little face. That's his nickname. Yeah. I, it, no, that's what Reddit calls him. Shout out to Toilet Paper USA, our Toilet Paper USA. Uh, Candace Owen, she's a big fan. And um, I don't know who this guy is. I don't remember him. This is Charlie Kirk, by the way. These people are awful. They think the world is coming to get them. They think that the government is trying to destroy them. And they'll destroy us all to make it happen! This is their plan, people. These are demons. Literally all major conservative talking points that are crazy and radical have at some point flowed through or come out of Turning Point USA. Mm. So they they talk about a lot of crazy stuff. Um, okay, so on the topic of Kanye's um, partnership, right? Adidas is pulled out, like you said, right? Mm. So Kanye West lost $1.5 in a matter of weeks. And, and is, is no, no longer, longer a billionaire. billionaire. So I guess he's not the richest black man in America anymore. What happened, ye? That did not go over well. Jesus, wow. dude. Corporate America is canceling Kanye West. Jesus. The thing that gets me about Kanye is, is that he will not apologize. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And to some people, that's like a big fucking deal. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But... Or ye ye ye, you know what I mean? Sorry, I'm easy joke. <laughs> um, my argument is like he's not backing down, okay? But man, dude, I just want to know how far this goes, because eventually, you know, it has to crash and burn. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's gonna be no more that they can pull from him, right? So then, what happens then? Well, here's the question. And he's I, not gonna apologize. So here's the question I have now: Who's gonna make his next album? Who's you gonna, know, who's gonna make it? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it'll get made. He could, he could probably, he could probably make it himself. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I don't know. I just feel like this whole thing is a big fucking. He has, he has his own label. That's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess he could make his own album. And I'm sure people will buy his, mm -hmm. will buy it. You know what I mean? And listen just to it. Just because of what's going on. This yeah. Is, increases album sales probably tremendously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because then everyone's going to want to know what the album, what, what's on the album and what he's talking about on the album, you know? And it's going to be about this shit. Do you think, do you think this is all a big ploy to drive a future album that might be coming out soon? Drive sales? Mm. You know, he's got an album that he's currently working on, maybe, that we just don't know about in the public eye that he's doing in private and then this is all part of that for some reason I think this all has to do with this campaign what campaign he's gonna run for president no for sure no there's no 2024, way 2024 he's running for president 
on which Mark party? My words. On Mark which my party? Words. Which party? Yeah, which party? I think he's made it pretty evident what side he's on. Yeah, that's fair. But, you know, I still think he's going to, I think he's going to do well, too. It's just me, though. My God. Oh, my God. But he's not going to solve anything. He's not going to solve the, the crises that are affecting our country. It'll definitely make it worse. He doesn't know anything about these things. You know what I mean? He's just parroting off, you know, stuff like, you know, Turning Point USA and Candace Owens and Charlie Kirk. He's, he's, just, <clears throat> he's just parroting whatever they, whatever they say. He literally said... The Jews and the Chinese was that Beijing are to blame for all the world's problems, like or excuse <coughs> me, to blame for all the problems of a black man. All black man's problems are because of the Chinese and the Jews. What the <laughs> fuck, man? But then he went around and said that white men are the most. What did he say? He said a straight white male has the least amount of a platform to even speak. Yep. Are you fucking dumb? I was, I was watching a stream the other night. Yeah. With one of these, you know, really famous streamers. Right. And he's listening to music on the stream to start it off. And he was playing some Drake. And then Kanye came on. And Kanye was playing for probably like two minutes. And the entire time, his whole chat was like, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Wow. Because of what, you know, what's been going yeah. on. And so then he's seen it. And he's seen all the comments. He's like, oh, he's like, you know what? Kanye won't be played on my stream anymore. <laughs> I'm done playing Kanye on stream. Y'all, 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 y'all make it very weird about me and my race, bro. I don't, I don't fuck with that at all, bro. All right, everyone's going to JLM in the chat. All right, everyone to spam JLM in the chat right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're just gonna play some, uh, some Drake instead of Kanye, bro. No more Kanye will be played on Aiden Ross's stream from here on out until he apologizes for what he's done because you guys know it's fucked up. Um wow. So isn't that even just like big shit hurts? Yeah. Even the little stuff. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah, like yeah. You're not even getting play on. Yeah. So that's, that's crazy too. That's wild. You know what I mean? That's wild. I probably won't play him on the radio anymore. Oh no, there's no way. There's no way. And like I said, like I said last episode, you know, you just can't separate the man from the music at this point. You know, especially in today's in today's society where everyone has so much interconnectivity between mm -hmm. the internet and Twitter and stuff like that. There's just no way to separate um, separate it. It's it makes sense. You know, it just makes sense to 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 shut them off. You know. That's wild. I know I didn't want to. I, this is one of the reasons why I don't want to talk about Kanye anymore, because I just feel like it's a low hanging fruit. And yeah, I get know. it. I get it. This might be the last time you hear about. Yeah, Kanye I, I really hope so. I really hope so for my own sake that I. This is the last time. I, I, no, it's not. But this is get, heads up. Listen up, everybody. This is the last time we're talking about Kanye West. Listen, put in the comments if you want to hear more about Kanye and more about the McRib. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, that's our show. Uh, that's what we're doing. That's how it is. Um, enjoy the show, all right, guys. Yeah. That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Peace.